I got a chance to play Saviors of Old Doom early, and I've got seven decks you gotta try on day one. Hey, buddy, watch this. I know it can be tough trying to figure out what deck you want to play at the beginning of expansion. I encourage everybody to try their own stuff, you know, test out your cards, just throw something together, see how it goes. But if you're looking for a list that is at least a little bit more refined, I've got some ideas in this video that came from the theory crafting live streams that I myself participated in. Now keep in mind these aren't refined decks. These aren't going to be the real versions of these decks in three or four weeks from now. Uh, so don't spend a whole lot of dust crafting this and hoping it's going to be your go-to deck for the expansion. But if you got these cards, uh, if you open them in your packs, you want to try it out, you like this archetype, give these lists a shot. Up first here, I have a Battlecry Shaman from yours truly. This was the deck I think I saw the most success with during the theory crafting live stream because it turns out doubling your battle cries is pretty crazy particularly when you're doing double damage with cards like life drinker weaponized wasp you can just push out lots and lots of pressure and eventually lethal damage with this sort of thing but also generate tons of value now this list is kind of a mid-rangey version that tops out with swamp queen hagatha and shutterwalk enabling you to play more towards the late game where you can just generate extra extra value and inevitable damage via your shutterwalk as well uh, but there are probably ways to build this uh, even more control or even more aggro we don't know yet which ones are going to take. So I thought this mid-rangey version was a nice split down the middle based on what some other people have built. So a safe start and certainly a deck that looked like it worked pretty darn well when we played it. Up next here, I have a Death Rattle Rogue by Dog that prominently features Onka the Buried, the new Rogue Legendary. And this deck uh, crushed me twice in a row. <laughs> so I'm pretty intimidated by it because it turns out playing Anka the Buried on turn five is ridiculous. If you have all of these big, scary legendaries uh, at the top end of your deck, which this certainly does, you can create absurd amounts of value. And Dog did something really smart here, which is to put Witchwood Piper in the list as the other lowest cost minion with Anka, which means your Witchwood Pipers are either going to chain into another Witchwood Piper, which will then chain into an Anka, or you're just going to draw your Anka immediately if you already have both Witchwood Pipers in hand, which really increases the consistency of hitting that Anka early. Now, clearly you're sacrificing some early game options in the meantime, uh, so you kind of have to go all in on this Anka plan. But it was working at the Theory Crafting live stream. Will it continue to work on a ladder where there's more aggro pressure? That remains to be seen. But because this list can do some crazy swings in that late game scenario and really just overrun your opponent with absurd stuff, I do think it has a chance to just play for that swing condition. And that's enough. But it's a really fun list to try out regardless. So moving on here, I have another one of my decks. This is a Taunt Warrior. A deck that kind of builds itself, you just take into the fray, Armagadillo, you toss in some taunts, and you've got yourself a pretty threatening package that can play some ridiculously large minions and overwhelm your opponent or just completely shut out aggro decks. It's really the kind of support pieces you're adding to that taunt shell that are going to differentiate these lists. So we went for a bit of a control build, Dr. Boom Mad Genius. You got some draw with Acolytes of Pain, some Brawls, some Omega Devastators. Basically just taking like the best cards we could to add into this list and making it a good warrior with a taunt package. And it was working really nicely. We won a lot of games with this deck. And although I'm not sure this will be better than something like Bomb Warrior, I think it has a chance because you can still just run all the best cards with this other complementary set of stuff that feels really good. And Bloodsworn Mercenary in particular is kind of crazy exciting in this deck. You can make some really big plays, summoning giant damage minions for only three mana. So this is an archetype I want to keep a very close eye on now. This list will not end up being the perfect list of Taunt Warrior, but it's definitely a good start and will probably win you some games on day one. So now let's take a look at a Lackey Zoo Warlock by Trump. I built a Lackey Zoo that featured a little bit more of a shenanigan package, some crazy expired merchant infinite discard stuff, but Trump really boiled it down to the essence of a Lackey Zoo deck, which my list was working really well as a Lackey Zoo deck. This one just leans into that even harder, so I do think uh, this will be the way to play that. It's just a pure good zoo because it turns out lackeys are amazing evil recruiter is absolutely absurdly good it feels like so far never set thrasher is an amazing card too 
uh, particularly in combination with the diseased vultures. So this has some like self damage aspects on top of the lackey package as well. And then Dark Pharaoh Takan is just kind of icing on the cake when all of this is working really well anyway. So all in all, Zoo has been a staple archetype in Hearthstone for a very, very long time. And I think this will probably be the new way to play it very successfully. Uh, I'm sure a few cards will swap out here or there, but this core deck looks like it's gonna be very, very strong. So moving on here, let's take a look at a secret mage from Ali Straza. Thank goodness she's found a way to play mage that does not involve Conjurer's Calling. I hope it's good enough to supplant Conjurers as the primary way to play mage. I have my doubts, but nonetheless, uh, I want to try out a list like this more, and I'm hoping that we can make this a successful uh, play on the ladder, because I have to say cards like Arcane Flak Mage and Cloud Prince felt really, really good. Uh, or often bad because they were played against me personally, but you could tell they were strong plays when they were made. Ancient Mysteries looked solid, so this new secret package seems to be coming along rather nicely, and Ali put together a good supporting package for it with some extra burst damage, some threats with things like Archmage Antonitis, some cheap spells in there as well just to keep things moving with something like Stargazer Luna, and uh, it seems like she was playing this deck fairly successfully the times I ran into her with it. So I like this style of mage. This is something I've played a ton in the past, just going face, being aggressive. This shifts it a little bit more defensively thanks to things like Arcane Flak Mage, but nonetheless, looks like a really fun way to play and is certainly gonna be more fun to play against than Conjurer's Calling. So I'm really, really rooting for this deck and I want you to try it out. So my final two decks here lean a little more towards meme territory. The previous ones I think have some competitive chances. These. I'm not ruling them out completely, but they're really more about fun. So if you're just looking for max shenanigans on day one, the next two decks are going to be great for you. This first one is a Line Cracker Quest Druid that I built. And for the record, I think Quest Druid is actually going to be pseudo competitive. The quest feels really, really good once it's complete. There's a lot of great choose one options. Maybe not quite this expansion it gets there, but it looks like a good base package. So this takes that and it adds in line cracker plus bees, which if you didn't know, if you can stick a line cracker on board and it survives, if you hit it with bees, it goes up to 80 damage, doubling its attack multiple times, allowing you to pull off some pretty crazy two turn kill opportunities, which we were able to pull off without a lot of consistency, but there's still some upside there. And we were winning games with this deck even without the combo. So it's still just a good, quest druid shell like i mentioned so i think if you cut line cracker bees you might have a better deck or at the very least cut line cracker but if you're looking for some max fun hitting your opponent for 80 can certainly help you achieve that and don't forget you can actually hit them for way more if you manage to have multiple bees in hand i don't know why you'd ever need to but it is a possibility so this is a really really stupid fun deck um probably something that will lose its uh novelty pretty quickly so checking it out on day one makes a lot of sense and then finally here the mogu cultist rogue utilizing a crazy combo attack nas whisker togwaggle scheme and mogu cultist where you can shuffle seven plus mogu cultists into your deck while also adding seven of them to your hand enabling you to make a play where you play seven mogu cultists and summon a high keeper raw 2020 to overwhelm your opponent now this list is probably far from optimized you might find better ways to do this but the idea is to give you some survivability some time to find this ridiculous win condition and uh, pull off the ultimate dream of summoning a high keeper raw uh, so again, not a competitively designed list here, but one that should offer all kinds of enjoyment if you get it to work. And sometimes the best time to do that is on day one of the ladder when it's a little bit easier to find wins. People are playing suboptimal decks. It's often a higher chance to get something off like this successfully. So if you get any of these cards and land, you're sticking with a Tack Nas Whisker laying around lately, you don't have anything to do with it, try this one out. It's going to be gloriously fun if you pull it off. And there you go, guys. Those are my seven day one decks to try. We got some good ones. We got some memes. Whatever your poison, there's something here for you. I think it's going to be a great day one on the Savers of Old Doom ladder. I'm excited to see what people come up with. I know we've barely scratched the surface of the decks that could exist out there. 
So if you have any crazy ideas, please feel free to share those in the comments below. Probably not going to be able to play them individually, but I always like seeing what everybody comes up with. So i um, curious to see what you're going to be playing on day one if one of these decks isn't quite meeting your needs. That said, thank you so very much for watching. And until next time, game on.